All right, y'all, back here with another episode of Carbon Jacob Fishing. Got a nice uh, little setup here. I'd like to thank Baitworks for letting me use their little studio back here in the back room. Um, but today, I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna be starting a little series, okay? Just got back from Rayburn from the Toyota series. Uh, fish is calling, like, not due too hot, but um, this past two years, I've been doing a lot of calling, like, as you guys have seen if you follow me on social media. And uh, I kind of want to start to do a little series on, um, you know, kind of the ins and outs of co-angling, what to expect, and kind of what to do to be a successful co-angler. Uh, you know, here I'm at Drew University here in Springfield, Missouri, so, um, you know, working on, on getting a boat and all that so that uh, I can get my career started in the front of the boat. Um, so I, I'm planning on kind of winding down from the coingler stuff, but I had an awesome learning experience the last these last two and a half three years uh, fishing as a coingler. It, it, you know, I made some of the best connections uh, through you know who I draw. I've learned so much about different bodies of water. So um, you know, today I'm gonna kind of start out with just like my basic setup. Um, you know, people may think you know, going from lake to lake that you really got to switch up what you bring. But as a co-angler for me, you know, it's been very simple. I fish anywhere from uh, down to Okeechobee to Rayburn to, uh, you know, all the way up with the St. Lawrence River and really have kept it like essentially the same uh, through all of that. And I got, a, I got a couple things with me today. I got, you know, this is pretty much all I'm going to bring with me during a day of co-angling. Um, and you know, a lot of this stuff can be applied not only to the back of the boat, but you know, whether you're fishing behind somebody, uh, you know, you're fishing a team tournament, you're fishing behind boats, or you're like at a highly pressured lake, uh, a lot of this stuff can be applied to that as well. So, uh, I'm going to start out first with, it's untangled here, I'm going to start out first with my money maker, right? The old fair one that we got right here. Um, this is... A Dobbins 703 SF. It's a great rod. Um, you know, it's just a seven. It really is just a seven foot medium, um, and I paired that with Shimano Stratic 2500, uh, and, and this has really been like my key setup for for pretty much anywhere I go, unless I'm fishing for smallmouth. The reason is because what I got tied on here, that is a wacky rig five inch Senko, right? So this, um, when you guys are fishing shallow in the back of the boat. This has got to be the best uh, thing that you can throw um, really in any situation. It's gonna work in dirty water, clean water. Uh, it really excels in grass. Uh, you know, you can fish it around wood, you can fish it around docks, definitely. Um, and it's it's gonna be one of those baits that like you put in front of a fish, you know, a lot of the times you're gonna get uh, bit. And that's the thing with co-angling is really a mind game you know you're watching your boater a lot of the times catch you know these bigger fish they're getting more bites because they're getting the juice before you are um you know whether it's fishing offshore and electronics or you're just beating the bank and being able to get bites in the back of the boat uh to to bring your not only bring your confidence up but obviously put fish in the live well is, is key um you know really a lot of the times i'm just looking for keeper bites and this wacky rig definitely does it so uh, just the spinning rod in general is like something you're going to want to get really, really good with uh, in the back of the boat. As far as the whack rig, a couple things that I fine tuned. If you guys ever watched my video um, of when I won the Potomac, that was a key bait there. Uh, and something I learned uh, is that with the whack rig, you're going to want to, I personally never use a weed guard and then never, two, never use an O ring. Um, the reason for that, the weed guard, you know, I fish in pretty thick grass and you know without a weed guard I'm still able to rip it through and a lot of times that'll even create like a reaction bite but um, I just think that I do lose fish because of a weed guard especially ones that are like wired so a lot of times I'll cut that weed guard off if you guys look at John Cox one of the best shallow fishermen throws a wacky rig a ton literally does the same thing no o-ring no weed guard if you guys are having to use a weed guard to throw your wacky rig into the stuff you're fishing, you shouldn't be throwing one. You should be picking up, you know, a Texas Rig or Senko or something like that. But um, that that is definitely key. 
and then no o-ring i think a lot of times when you throw the o-ring you're really not saving the sink hill all that much um as far as like durability and then also you're really um you know a lot of times when you cast that bait it'll double hook itself on the plastic the way that o-ring is shaped and um you know you're you're gonna lose fish because of that and that's happened to me quite a few times next setup okay we got a dobbins 702 just another seven foot spinning rod uh here we got a robo worm with a little cover shot like rebar hook style hook weedless hook another great bait you're gonna be able to fish it through grass um this is kind of my go-to when you're fishing deeper water um or you're kind of fishing targets like dock pilings uh, at the Potomac, I was fishing this pier with this guy, um, and I actually threw that at the Potomac. I threw it on this setup. This is why I brought this one. This is like a power. I'll throw sometimes as a power shot with a little bit heavier weight, um, especially when you're around like bigger class fish. When you're fishing three, four pound fish, um, you know I'll throw it on this. This is a 742, so it's just a 74. It's a great little like finesse, power finesse rod. Um, and you know I love doing that as well. Uh, the Robo Worm is, is a staple. Uh, mm -hmm. I caught a ton of fish on it at Rayburn at that BFL that I did um, did two weeks ago that y'all saw that video on. Uh, caught key fish on it at the Potomac. And uh, yeah, it's, de it's definitely mm. definitely the deal if y'all are um, fishing pretty much anywhere. Um, obviously up north, fishing the St. Lawrence, like you're fishing for smallmouth, uh, flatworm. Flatworm with the, uh, you know, just a regular split shot, drop shot gun, Katsu book. I'm not sponsored by any of these brands, by the way. It's just kind of what I've learned to use. Um, but yeah, those those are literally my two main baits. Like I'll I'll always have those tied on pretty much in the back of the boat, unless I'm in a special situation, like I'm fishing for smallmouth or fishing deep. But that's literally what I'll bring. And then as far as your bag okay this is my bag right here that i bring fishing with me a lot of you guys may think that this is not a whole lot but i think that this helps me so much you know just bringing a couple this bass mafia with a couple bags of plastics and then uh i'll usually bring this or maybe two of these but most of the time just this um little 3600 box i think it helps clear my mind um, you know, I don't have a ton of stuff with me, so I really only have a couple options to choose from. Uh, this is actually from Rayburn, uh, from that Toyota series. Um, you know, uh, he's still got my stuff in here. As you can see, open it up. Uh, the guys at Drew both days were live scoping for suspended fish, so it was, it was difficult. I caught fish, but just not enough to do well. Um, but I mean, as you guys can see, or you can't see, but I got, you know, two jerk baits. Two chatter baits, a couple of rattle traps, um, and then I keep all my term, a lot of my terminal stuff here in this big compartment here. Um, but yeah, it's, it's real simple, and I think I think that's kind of where I went wrong my first year of co-angling. Um, a lot of guys like to, you know, come off the water and and say, you know, I had a bad boat or, uh, you know, we weren't around fish, yada yada yada, and. I think that, uh, you know, a lot of that is part of your mentality. Uh, you know, every time we pull into a spot, uh, when I'm fishing in the back of the boat, you just gotta have the confidence that you are around fish. And it definitely helps. Um, you just gotta stay alert. You gotta watch what your boat is doing. You don't know, watch your drafts if those are on in the back. Um, and like I said, with these setups, just keeping it like very simple. Um, you know, what, what I bring with me is not a whole lot, but it's stuff that I, know that can get bit pretty much anywhere I go and you just gotta um, just gotta grind her out that, that's what Cone is all about but I highly recommend it if you guys are in high school college and you don't have access to a boat uh, or if you do and you just want to go co angling I highly recommend it you guys have a shot at winning a lot of money um, and you can start doing them at 16 years old and it's, it's a great way to great way to meet people, great way to experience new lakes without having to tow your boat and truck uh, all the way around the country. You know, you can travel with guys and, and really make it not very expensive. But um, that's gonna kind of wrap it up for the first episode, just talking about like my tackle management on the boat and everything. Um, but let me know what y'all want me to do next. 
Um, you know, I'm thinking probably do like some some uh, mindset videos, maybe some talking a little bit about how to prepare uh, for a co-angler tournament. But um, that's that's what this is what I was thinking for the first episode. But I'm gonna keep doing these. Um, you know, I'm not getting on the water a whole lot. My boat currently has a crack transom, so I'm getting rid of it, getting a new boat in, uh, newer boat in, hopefully soon. And uh, we're gonna keep fishing, keep grinding, and uh, we'll see you guys in the next episode. Thank you.